Yeah, I've been busy. Busy, busy, busy day. As I say, yeah. first of all, good to see you again, Peter. Uh, first yeah. interview was good. We got there uh, at the start. We've been keeping in touch with each other for a, for a good what, couple of weeks now. Then, as I say, and um, just to get the, the, the word out about depression, suicidal, stuff like that. So it's glad to be back. Talk to you again, Peter, as I say. Um, so it was last night with yourself with the football, first of all. It was all right. I was a bit nerve wracking, wasn't it? Both sides had chances. I thought first half were really good. To be fair, I thought I thought Scotland should have scored, and I thought we should have scored. That, that definitely, a definitely. That's a good game. Um, I don't see, but what do you think? What do you think? The, the mood. The mood would have, what do you think? What do you think the mood would have been? You what? Sorry. The mood. Do you think there'd been a lot of depression last night? Well, I put a post on. Uh, sometime while football were on yesterday, I think, and it was about uh, all, all the lay, all the women in Britain will want England to win because domestic domestic abuse goes up by I can't remember what it was thirty percent or something like that. I don't believe everything I read, but if that's true, um, it's quite a shocking sort of well, fact, well, isn't it? You know what they did up in Scotland, Peter? Um, see you at the Derby Rangers or Celtic. As we were mean, we were mean rivalry up Scotland, eh? But what they did yeah. is all the domestic abuse kind of known offenders. But the days they go and lift them prior to the game. So they got arrested prior to the game, but your known woman beating, eh? They get, they get uh, lifted before the game and they get held into the cells until the game's finished. You know what I'm talking about? Or they get put into uh, jail, basically, until the, game, the game's finished, which is a good thing. Because usually with these kind of matches, that's when the the domestic violence happens. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. As I say, well, last night, hopefully, everybody was in a good mood. Hopefully, get everybody in good spirits. You know what I mean? And nice. everybody woke up this morning and been chilled and relaxed with each other. You know what I'm talking about? Um, because these, these, kind of, these, kind of, these things could, um, these kind of big kind of atmospheres raise a lot of attention. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And yeah, definitely. Especially especially when it's filled with like alcohol. You know what I mean? Um and it's filled, filled with alcohol, it's kinda brings it on a little mere for men to actually match you and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But as I say, I'll let you kinda get a wee word now. Man. I'm not a massive drinker, so I don't really go out around pubs, but I know that we have um people in our group obviously who like a drink and who go out and, and socialise and stuff there's other people who work in bars and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, I know they've been drafted into work because it'll be a bit busier it would have been busier in there yep. so yeah I hope they're all alright they all had good nights and stuff last night um, but yeah I don't drink an awful lot so um, not something I really know a lot about and I've never been really involved in domestic violence um so again um uh, yeah right. i know it happens obviously but yeah not not an awful lot i've never been really involved in it do you like doing scarborough is it kind of is it what about the domestic violence down there is it kind of um is it bad down there for like as i say the football after like certain football matches does it do does it really kick um, off I suppose anyway, yeah, I suppose if that's a statistic that you would suspect that that would be, you know, all over. Yeah, I don't suspect it'd be any different. Um, yeah. yeah. I think if you're in them sort of relationships and, and you've had drink, drinks well, involved. Past, and, at the roundabout, yeah, the bit where the, yeah who knows? Well, I would imagine that's the case all over, if I'm being honest. Just put past the mm -hmm. But, well, as I see, um, but as I say, no, let your missus, let your missus have a say, hey, if she want to come on and bring me a little, let her come on, hey, it's up, up to yourself, okay? But She's talking to your stepdaughter, I think. Oh, right, right. But, um, aye, so, we're, talk, we're going to talk about the suicide, the suicide rate, you know, in the, um, the UK, um, it's at a, an all-time high. I don't know about, if you've hit red or watched a lot about it eh? in the news about the suicide rate. 
but it's quite high now. So what do you think of that, Peter? Um, I think suicide rate is, is probably it's quite high, very at one of its highest peaks. I don't know the exact figures off the top of my head. I know yeah. that. In 2018, 2019, Scarborough was the worst um, top of the top of the statistics for suicide, and it's been in particular male suicide. Um, but that's still <clears throat> more than relevant now, um, and it's quite. I think the age bracket's quite young um, as well. We're talking between sort of 16 and, and late. 20s yep. uh, and obviously we've just had this funding and I was at church last week at doing the going into the group and the lady who runs the church the vicar also does some of the funerals up at the creme and we were chattering about I just said I asked her my question was is how many can I ask you a question I said to her she said, yeah, of course you can, Peter. Um, I said, how many funerals have you um, done, been involved with? Or, or pe how many people have you buried yep. uh, that have died from suicide? Mm -hmm. um, and she told me, I think she said about in about nine years, she said 15. Jesus, that's a lot something like that's quite a lot. Um, but in the last 18 months, yep. she'd done 16. That, 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 well, Not from suicide. That, well, there's a big major problem there, Lenny. You can, there's got to be something done about that, eh? Is that just in Scarborough alone? I, I, well, I think, obviously, surrounding area, it's quite a big area. North Yorkshire and Scarborough quite, covers quite a big area with it know. being a bit uh, you know, once you get out of Scarborough main area, there's still quite a lot of little places around the outskirts, so it's spread over a big area. But even so, I would imagine a, a high percentage of them will be in Scarborough. That's a bit sad, eh? Because as I say, I'm, I'm in Scotland, um, especially where I'm at Falkirk, the, the, the suicide rate for what, yeah, the teenagers is, oh, oh, there was just one the other day. Um, an 18 year old boy, you know what I mean? Um, it's first side, and it's a weekly, it's a weekly thing in Falkirk now, you know what I mean? And it's, it's all youngin', you know what I mean? And it's far personal yeah. thing, it's just because they're, they're getting up in the morning and they're going to school, and once they finish the, the school, and they'll all go to that job or anything, guide their way, don't they? They're just lying in their bed and Playing the computer all night, no doing nothing. You know what I mean? So they're getting up and they're just, uh, they're, they're just missing the world. You know what I mean? They didn't yeah. understand what the world is or reality. So they just switch up their laugh, then you know it, it's, it's sad that they're not staying with the way, eh? And it's sad, you know what I mean? Because there are a lot of good young people in Scotland and maybe doing Scarborough, as I say, or something quite, could be out working. And stuff like that, but because you the system failed them, they just feel like there's nothing there for them, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you get more and more stuff, don't you? Then into that rut where you're, you're likely to turn to crime, drugs, um, and just go down that wrong path, aren't you? You know, me, me, and you, me and you both know that from personal experience, so um, I. I I don't know what the answers are. I mean, fact, money, money wise, you, they just don't care so much. Exactly, they don't. They don't. Um, as I say, um, it's no, it's no the best in the way. You don't need, as I say, it's, it's one of the things that you've got to deal with. Eh? I, I reckon, you know, I mean, you've got to be strong for it. Eh? Yeah, very much so, mate. Yeah, I totally agree. You know um, what I mean? um, as I say, because uh, if you didn't, then you're no, you know what I mean? You're no balance, basically. You know what I'm talking about? I was talking to somebody 
Um, I went and I was sat in the park the other week. It was nice last weekend or the weekend before. And I was sat in the park, and I know a lady off the estate who's had a family, a family member who. Sorry, Peter, I'm just getting a flag here, man. Sorry about that. Keep up. Sorry about that. Because we're getting a flag here, sorry. Um, but I, sorry, what were you saying there? Sorry again. I know a lady on the estate where I live who was sat in the park the other day. She gave a sat in the back of the way. And I know one of her family members who taken his own life from suicide recently. Yep. And um, it was partly the motivation to kick me on, really. Um, and, and just kick on and try and make that back to more known, more aware. Um, like we say, in Scarborough, it has been a massive problem. I don't think that's going to get any better after lockdown unless we, we do make drastic changes and, um, yeah, drastic actions have to be taken right across the board for mental health. How do you, how do you, how did you feel? Um... But when the seed that were coming out of lockdown, you know what I mean? How did you feel like when you were going outside and stuff like that? Are you still cautious or you, you know when when do you come out of lockdown? You basically what I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? Because you wouldn't remember like when you're in a place for that was been there a year and a bit with the lockdown there. And now to come out and adjust to uh, civilization, you know what I mean? It's got to mingle with the brain. You know what I mean? Because I know, people, I know people past experience has been in prison for a long period of time that when you get out, you're just, you you know what I mean? And you're like a robot. You just don't know what to do. Everything's 100 miles an hour. So that'll be, the, you maybe suppose you think that'd be the same with lockdown then, eh? So you wonder how people yeah. are adapting yeah, to that. Yeah, I've got, life, eh? you yeah, know what I've got I mean? to admit it. I went into town one day and I'd been in twice that week. I'd been in earlier in the week before mm. the rules changed. And it was quite quiet. And um, I walked round the corner into the main drag of, of, of the town centre the same week, but a few days after the restrictions had come off. Yeah. <laughs> and first thing I thought in my head was, fucking hell, it's busy, you know, whoa. You yeah. know, and I was just a bit, I was a bit taken back myself and, you I'm know, that bloody used to bother me, so... But that's uh, it's your, your, your head gets fried. Yeah, hey, it's your head gets fried. Like, even the new, like, I'm still trying to get my wits about me. You, you know what I mean? It's like, you're saying we're in lockdown and this and that, but it's trying to come out of lockdown. You know what I mean? It's like, how, where do you go? You know what I mean? It's like if you're waiting on something. You know what I mean? So you need, need wonder what the youth are doing what they're doing. You know what I mean? And it's sad because I'm not needed for the government that's actually willing to help people. You know what I mean? To kind of help them. They're just going to look at them and go, oh, no, no, no. You know what I mean? You need to kind of do it yourself or there's no funding, there's no like this. It's sad because there's, there's too many lights getting taken. You know what I mean? And it's on, the, it's on the paper, it's on the news every single day. You know what I mean? It just there's too many risks. There's, 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 they won't plough the money in because too for me. There's too many risks. There's too many like, you know. There's more chance that that, that you're gonna do nothing. Um, so they won't plough the money in. There's more chance that kids will sign on, do a couple of weeks, then leave. Yep. You know, stuff like that. Of course, is, is, yep. that's for me why they don't do it. But um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the answers are. Um, I suppose if they knew that, we'd, the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? Well, 100%, Peter, 100%, as I say. So, but, but how has your group been going um, in the last couple of days? Quiet this week, because we're coming out. I think people are trying to get back their lives a little bit and go a bit back to normal. So everybody's yeah. trying to get work back into the jobs and try and find life, a bit of life again. Yeah. Like you were saying. Like you've just been saying, really adapting back into normality and normal life because things are starting to open up a little. Yep. 
I was saying to my partner sometime this week or last week, wasn't it? I was saying to you about coming out of lockdown. I said, for us, it's going to be no different because mm-hmm. my partner works in care. So she's worked all the way through lockdown in care homes or <laughs> going out into the queue. She's a key worker then? Yeah. Got proud of proud of the devil. But because of that, the children have been at school as well, which has allowed me to do the groups. Otherwise, right. if the children had been here, I'd have had to homeschool the children and wouldn't have been able to do the groups. So mm-hmm. it's sort of lucky that Emma does work in care, or you know, because otherwise we'd have been in a different boat completely. Right, man. It's, it's sad because eh, at the end of the day, like, the su- going back to the suicide rate in the um, UK right now, there's a lot of youth and as I say, maybe growing to like the 20s, 30s seems to be kicking in. And I don't even know if that's because they feel like their life's ended, if you know what I mean. Like, they're looking at it like, well, I've, I've, been, I've been here, I've done this for so long, but no... What's the point? You know, you know what I mean? They can't get a job, they can't do this, they can't do that. So they think their life ends. You know what I'm talking about? I think that plays a major role in it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, we live on a council estate and you sort of see some kids around the council estate sometimes and you just think they're always going to struggle to get a job. Right, and you, you, sometimes you can see that from them being quite little. Yeah, and that's quite sad. Aye, aye, one hundred percent. Eh, because um, I, I was saying, I can I say it myself, and you see it every day. Eh, you see it every day, every day of the week. I'm just running about, and you know the you know the ones that's going to make it, and the ones that's no, and it, you know what I mean. It's sad. You know what I'm talking about? Because when you try and reach out to what. The community, you know what I mean? The dinner, the dinner kind of wasn't you, you know what I'm talking about? And it's like, I'm only trying to do this to help the community, but you only did not help me, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's sad, it is, it's pretty sad, like, yeah, I mean, but, um, then anything else you might catch up in, but discuss. In relation to suicide, I've tried to commit suicide twice when I was quite young. Um, right. I tried twice between the ages of... I'd have been... Within a couple, within a couple of years, between 16 and 19, between 16 and 19, I tried to set my own life twice. Once was in group. We've gone on holiday. Yep. Uh, I took a fucking concoction of tablets that we had with us. Um, and I remember going, getting dragged to the doctors with my, my girlfriend at the time. Yep. And she went and told the hotel manager, and they rang my doctors, we ended up at the doctors. And I remember him taking me down on the seafront and he was making me drink out of a two-litre Coke bottle, plastic Coke bottle. Right. See what? Straight out of the sea. Filled up front in the bottle, out of the sea. And he was forcing me, I mean, just forcing me to drink it um, to make me sick. That's, um, that, no, that's deep. That's deep, that. That's deep. That, that, that that alone was um, an experience I'll never forget. That that just that alone. Um, but then I can remember going in the ambulance, and it was like uh, we weren't in England. And I'm going back when I was like 16, 17, maybe. So I'm 45 now. So I'm going back 30, year, you know, 30 years. Yeah. Um, and it was like an old post office van with the two doors on the back. Um, and it, it must have been 10 year, 20 year old, this van that I got in. It was like an old, and every time you went over a bump, you know, it was rattling. And, um, 
<clears throat> I remember being in that a long, long time, getting to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I think it was three hours drive yeah. to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I remember being very hallucinogenic, um, hallucinating. Um, I remember talking to my mum. Yeah. My mum had died when I was 15. So, so you're a bit, yeah. uh, I was in a bad fucking place. Uh, I ended up in this tunnel talking to her with a light. There was a light there. And she actually said to me, fuck off back, Peter, go away. Fuck off, go away, go back. Quite bizarre, really. I'll never forget it. Um, and then I remember coming round the hospital about three days later in, in, in ICU. Yeah. In Greece. And I had a pipe down my nose, down the back of me, up my nose and down, in, down into me. I remember waking up and pulling this pipe out because it was making me sore on the right. back of my throat. It was really, really sore, so I pulled this pipe out. Um, like you do, like you do at eighteen, you know, thinking you're Mister Know It All and what have you, like you're saying. No, you know, you think you, think you know better. No, it's, it's, uh, sorry, I. Yeah, wanted to get up out of out of the bed and go and leave the hospital, but obviously won't let me out. So I had to stay in there another couple of days, and then um, I got released. Um, but yeah, it was a it was an experience and a half. Let's say. Uh, Two seconds, mate. Yeah. Take all the time you need, mate. Yeah, I do quite, quite damp on Scotland. So, you know, rainy and miserable up here. And, no, to your time, to your, to your time, Paul. Sorry, mate, my nose was running. <laughs> no, no, I've, got, I've, I've got a runny nose, I know. And, I, and as I say, I've got a runny nose and a blocked up kind of chest. I don't know if it's hay fever. I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? But it's like, oh. the new, I'm, I've got a runny nose and I'm kind of struggling to breathe. And it's a bit tight, but other than that, I don't know if it's hay fever on the way. But, um, yeah... So you were saying, you were saying, they just failed. Can I touch a wee bit there? But the second about... time, the second time, um, I think I fall out with girlfriend first time I went all the. I think it was some over some on now, but I was probably just struggling with life. I, a lot had gone on in them last. Obviously, my mum died, and then um, think bits and things. You know, just life, like you say, probably yeah. felt like. No one cared about me, no one wanted me, no one were bothered. And then second time we'd split up. Um, it was my sister who reminded me about it. I didn't even remember, to be fair, until about two years ago. Me and my sister were chattering about it. Um, yeah. And if you watch my sister's videos that I've put on uh, my YouTube channel and shared them to my Facebook and stuff like that, my sister explains what life was like for her and me. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. everything that happened to her, same applied to me. Um, so, yeah, if you watch them, it talks about our lives as children. You probably understand a yeah. little bit more that a lot happened to her, um, for it, even before she died. You you know, Darren, but for the viewers who are watching, who don't, you know, if they watch them videos, um, yeah. Yeah. She says things in her own words from her point of view. Obviously, I've got my my own point of view and my, my story, but everything she's saying is pretty true. Yeah. Um, in context, anyway. Um, and, yeah, the second time, I don't even remember doing it. My sister reminded me. And, again, I think it was tablets. Um, we ended up walking to the hospital, which was about five miles away. Um, or getting a taxi there. Maybe we might have got a taxi there and walk back, maybe. I can't remember. Um, 
yeah, I've tried twice and then I I was very, very low coming into just as we came out into lockdown because I'd just been put in the middle of a court case with my ex-partner over contact for the children and some things came out about my past um, that nobody knew really. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff that happened when I was 11 years old. So okay. it's been difficult. Um, but thanks to the support of the guys that I've had in my group and on this man club, meeting people like you. Um, it gives me the confidence to to try and carry on, to try and be better, which I do every day. I've done since I was 11, mm-hmm. since man, I made them. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate that comment. Like, eh? um, as I say, you're doing a good job, like, because eh? you're coming out with a lot here and it's deep, you know what I mean? And as I say, you're, you're, you're doing a good job, but I'm fat, I'm, I'm grateful that you that you say that, eh? Because as I say, I'm we will become good friends, you know, but sorry, carry on, eh? No worries, mate. Absolutely no worries. It's been a pleasure. Um and if anybody does want to ask me for anything directly, Darren, the more no. than welcome to ask me anything about any I've been through so much. I'll give you my opinion, I'll give you my take or what I've done or where I've been. Um if I can on that subject. If anybody wants to ask me anything specifically, please do. Me and Darren won't accept any nastiness. Um, if you ask us in a right context, in a right manner, we'll speak to anybody about oh. anything. Well, as I say, there'll be any, uh, um, there'll be any stupid comments or that because we'll just be blocked and taken right off this channel away because we're trying to keep it clean because at the end of the day, um, in a positive manner, because people like with mental health, issues or whatever, they've probably been through this carry-on before, but with the internet or, you know what I mean, Facebook or that, so we don't want to upset anybody, you know it's what not, I mean? It's not, it's not that, is it? Me, me and you both know that. We have to be able to talk about these things in a sensible manner, and like I've said, I'm open to anybody asking anything, as long as it's asked in a nice manner, correct manner, We'll answer them questions, we'll look into them topics, we'll go down them road, me and Darren will talk about it, we'll, we'll come up with something, we'll try to find somebody who's been through it if we haven't. Yep. Um, I have people in my group who may be willing to come on and do a bit, depending yep. on what the subject's about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so... Well, I'm, I'm coming to the enemy. I'm... <laughs> I'll be doing the, I'll be doing the few, well, couple of months anyway, next couple of months I'll come, uh, come doing see you at the start of the summer and uh, summer holidays. Eh? Yeah, uh, I'll come down and we'll bring the podcasting gear. Ben, you know what I'm talking about? And we can maybe get yeah, a couple yeah. of people to come on a podcast, eh? Um, and maybe, maybe they want yourself. You know, I mean? so it doesn't mean you're doing live all the time. You know what I'm talking about? But let's yeah. see. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that another time. You know what I mean? Um, tonight just to talk about suicide awareness kind of thing you know what I mean um, and stuff like that but I I know I know when you're touching on that and the, the suicide um, I've had thoughts of suicide but I've never tried it you know what I mean um, that, the only time that was was when um, I was doing two years in prison and I was with uh, my partner well not the partner of me now my ex-partner I was with her, I was 15, right until I was 24. Um, and I'll say, I, I, I got two years in Berlin in 2003. I started in 2003, because I got out in May 2004. I so in May 2000, I so a year, sorry. And just before I got, I got out, I released from uh, Berlin, three months prior, my, my, my ex partner had run away with my brother. I was a wee boy, you know what I'm talking about? And it felt like, right. it felt like the fucking folly of the jail fell right in front of me, you know what I'm talking about? Um, so that straight away, the last three months of my sentence was just sitting there thinking, you know what I mean, what she done this for, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And why like my brother doing this to me? Um, and that's when things just went kind of worse, you know what I mean? Um, well, you wouldn't expect that, but honestly, you know what I mean? For your own bra, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, to run away with your partner and, and, and Valentine's Day. And the worst it was, 
Ada vi jaru. Ehm koe. Si das 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 ma se. And that's that was just that that blew me away. You know what I mean? That fucking that destroyed me. You know what I mean? Um but I was lucky enough to have that three months to kind of calm down. You know what I mean? And wind down to see sense because if I got out, you know, I'd, I'd have probably been life after him. You know what I'm talking about? And, but then, nobody, nobody like that are worth getting life after. You know what I mean? If anybody can do that to you, you know what I mean? Then there's no worth at all. You know what I mean? But that's the only time I can have serious suicidal thoughts in my whole time in prison in my life. Um, was when that happened to me in 2004 um, in Berlin when I was, when I was the end of the two year and my partner uh, seven year done that to me to move my brother eh? and he's still, he's still there to this day and they'll go wings and that fine. but that's what kind of fucked the family up you know what I mean that caused a big rift in the family um, I, I, I started taking the, the, the kit um they block things out, as you do. Um, yeah. I was never out of jail. I was only lasting like maybe two weeks at a time. You know, and just constantly in and out, in and out for the last uh, maybe five to 2009. Just constantly in every two weeks. Just to, couldn't cope with it. You know, I couldn't cope with it. And it took yeah. me years to get out of it. But that's the only time I've kind of thought about suicide was that. And was that time when I came up with Tony. And I was like, there's none here. You know what I mean? None. But I was only 21, 22 at the time. I was like, there's none here. You know what I mean? There's none left me here. And as I say, that just felt like the holy balloon just felt right to me. And, and trust me, but I managed to get out of it in a way because I knew I've been because of 10 years and I've got a wee boy at six, Declan. You know what I mean? And if it wasn't for her, then God knows where I'd be, Peter, you know what I mean? But I've still, I've still got my issues. I've still got my issues. My problems with what to deal with. You know what I mean? I'm no, it's no plain sailing like it. Eh? You know what I mean? But as I say... No, it's not. I agree. It's not. It's hard. I mean, it was hard. Um, at the time, it was, uh, it was really hard. Eh? I, I'd never st- I, know that I, I never ever stood my mum and dad when I was 12. Because I, I got taken into care when I was a wee boy. Um, and it's the care system. But foster parents at the start, then as I say, with the foster parents to kind of like, um, what do you call them? Secure units. But it was only for like maybe a week at a time in the UK. Respite care, sorry. And, um, after the children home, when I went back to my, my dad for uh, respite, then it was just secure unit after it. Because I, I, I was just, me and my brothers were just causing fucking me and um, and up in Paris today. It was just on you, you know what I mean? Um, my dad just couldn't cope with it, and I, through the three years, I was the youngest, and I was the one that put in care. You know what I mean? And I didn't, I didn't, I still maybe didn't understand why he put me in care. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? The three years, why was it me, youngest? You know what I'm talking about? But I was, yeah. I was, I was nine right until I was thirteen. It was unreal, but me and my brother forward. Then I mean, it was like what adults are doing the new. You know what I mean? Committing these crimes, me and my brother were doing it maybe at nine, ten, you know what I mean? And you're like, ah, but you know what I mean? Why are you starting this at this age for? I mean, I've done that when I was fucking 13. You know what I'm talking about? I was driving, I was driving lorries down to Sunderland with slates when I was fucking bastard on 14, 15. You know what I'm talking about? And it's kind of, it was, it was, my, my life was kind of, it was, no bad, but it was shit, you know what I mean? When you're talking about like, beatings and that, you know what I'm talking about? My dad and that, eh? was all that stuff. But my mum, she always kind of defended us in a way. And it was sad because my dad would take it in my mum then, you know what I mean? And as yeah. I say, we'd, we'd kind of go out and day me off, carry on, and it was, it was fucking hellish, man. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, but I went for there, sorry, jailed on. Um, then for Jailson, it was um, straight into prison, you know what I'm talking about after that. But when I left Jailson, I was uh, 16, sorry, 1999, I left Jailson, I got my house in 2000, in the year 2000, during Greensmith, um, with my ex-partner at the time. 
and I still managed to stay away from the police. You know what I mean? No arrested, but just away from the police. You know what I mean? Um, then, as I say, shit started to happen, and that was it for then. You know what I'm talking about? Up to 2010, yeah. then I just kind of stayed at the jail. You know what I mean? I've never been back. You know what I mean? Never took drugs for the 2009. You know what I mean? Apart from my methadone script, and, but that's about it. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Like. So I've been through a lot. You know what I mean? So I need, but I need to sit down and can I get it out properly? Because there's a lot. You know what I mean? There are a lot there. But you, you've no good time to do yeah. and talk about this. You know what I mean? Because you're, it's not about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but as I say, that's about the only time I've ever kind of uh, felt suicidal was that time with my partner. I, mean, I don't know if it's just me, but I just bought things up. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I just bought, bought, bought things up. I don't let it out. Um, so I think I we it. all do. Sorry, sorry, what you were saying? What you I, were I think that's something that all. I think that's something that all males, all guys do. I think all males probably have suicidal thoughts once in their life. Yeah. Um, talking to a lot of guys, you know, certainly a lot of guys who've had them thought. I'm not saying they've carried them through, but they have had that that actual thought in their head that they, that they, that they would be low enough to, to feel that way, to, to admit it or be lonely enough, you know, whatever. Yeah. There's, there's so many different sort of reasons for it. Right. Um, I think I think guys get more isolated than, than girls. Girls seem to be able to talk to each other a lot easier than guys. And I think that's probably the, the biggest problem we have as guys. Yeah, there's open up. And, and I think as well, the other thing is, is you see the meme he's doing on Facebook, on, on, on Twitter, wherever you look, you know, online, on, on social media. Yeah. Um, be, care, be careful who you, you, be careful who you open up to and admit your worst sort of fears to because the, the next day they could be your enemy. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what you find, isn't it? You know, even a partner, like you said, you know, then they end up with a family member or they leave you, you fall out, their loyalties change and boom, you've got a massive problem straight away. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, 100%. You don't, to, you, don't to, you don't have to do anything as a guy. Just have a past and you've already got a problem mm-hmm. without doing anything. 100%. 100%. You, you have no wrong in that, eh? I'm just... Right, right, reading a wee, yeah. And I've I'm seeing that time and time again now. I think the system's gone too far the other way. Yeah. You know, it's too I've got a question for you, Peter. I've yeah, got a comment. Um can you ask Peter I'll put it on the screen quite there you go. Can you see it? Can you see that white line up on the screen? No? Uh, my eyes aren't that good, fucking hell, Darren. No, it's, oh, well, yeah, no, I can. Captain, can you ask Peter when he attempted yeah. to commit suicide? How did he have to feel afterwards? Did he regret the attempts? You did press one of good question, that is. That's an hard question, that. That's yeah, an hard that's question, that, mate. No, that's quite question, a hard question, because. No, um, I can't say I've really thought about it, mate, to be fair. Um, maybe I did at the time and I've just forgot. I mean, it was a long time ago. You talk, I'm 40, uh, I'm 45 this year. So, oh, you know, you are going back, you are going back close on 30 years. And yeah. I have a habit of blocking just absolutely sort of turning the page and moving on because I've had a bit like you were saying, Darren, lots happened. (laughs) Mine started from being uh, very, very, very young. Um, 
and 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 it never stopped. It just it was one trauma after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. So I suppose by the time I got to um, I think it scared me. I would say it probably scared me a little bit, thinking back, trying to pull bits out of my brain now, thinking back the first time, I think it scared me a little bit because I'd, I'd spoke to my mum, which fucking must have mashed my head. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I only know that because my partner who was in the ambulance with me told me I was talking to her but calling her mum. So right. I was in my head walking down this tunnel that was holding her hand talking. You know what I mean? So I probably yeah, I think it scared her. Um and we ended up getting married and having a baby after that, my first son. So um I think it probably scared me. And then the second time would have just been selfishness in a sense of I split up with the same girl, it was the same girl. Um it was the same girl I was with both times. Um, and that was the first main relationship I'd had. I, one after my mum died, I met her six or seven months after my mum died. Oh, my mum's still alive. No, my mum's still alive. Now you're asking. No, it was after she died. I met Vicky after my mum died. I'd just started driving. I'd just passed my test. Um, I worked on that, so I had money, a little bit of money put away. So I did my driving lessons, passed my test at 17. I had my car, got a car, got it insured. Uh, I did all that shit at 17, straight after my mum had died, but I failed my GCSEs. Um, Mm -hmm. And then my mum died, because my mum died in the middle of my GCSEs, I failed my GCSEs, met Vicky after it. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister had tried to tell family about what happened when we were younger nobody believed her I think a combination of that and splitting up with Vicky uh, my mum died leaving us again because she walked out when she got caught having an affair when, on my 11th birthday so a lot same, same with us a lot happened mate um, and I think by the time I got to 20 I was just like you just said what have I got left? Fuck this shit. This isn't a life. This is bullshit. So, so yeah, I never really thought about it. Um, yeah, you made me feel a bit guilty that I was supposed not thinking about it. I mean, I probably would have done it at the time. I'm sure I've just forgot and moved on. No, I don't. Um, Look, you need to move on, eh? You can't keep, you can't keep riding that circle. You know what I mean? Well, if I had it up, if I had to do I'd probably been dead, wouldn't I? 100%, yeah. 100%, I just kept riding that bike. You'd know. have been died. I'd have been dead. But yeah. with me, um, I, but when I, when I, that time when I was telling you about the total suicidal, about when that happened to me, my thing, man, right? Um, my brother, sorry, and my father. Well, I never ever tried it, but the, the thoughts were scary enough. You know what I mean? Because I lay in my bed, I wasn't shaving, I wasn't washing. I was just lay in the bed for fucking three months and all I could think was I'm, I'm, I'm killing them when I get out. You know what I mean? And as I say, um, it was terrible. Terrible. The thoughts in my head was unreal. You know what I mean? So I didn't know how you would answer that question. And uh, it's, it's an interesting question, eh? You know what I, mean? but, uh, I don't think it's time. I don't think at the time you think about it. You yeah. certainly don't think about it. It's, it's not like that. When you're feeling that way out, you just go and do it. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how the brain snaps. Yeah. Yeah, if it snaps, yeah, exactly that. Somebody said it's a bit like elastic band, didn't you? If that elastic band snaps, you know, you yeah. can't bring it back. It's gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, now obviously, yeah, looking at it, from a 45-year-old man's point of view, I look back and feel probably quite guilty. And um, but, but then I, I, I can sit here and say, you know, if you are that low and, and you know, it happens, doesn't it? You know, we see it. Ta- we're, we're talking about it. We're here talking about it because it's happening. Yeah. So it, it, there, is, there are reasons for it. And like you said, mental health is massive. 
guys need to be able to talk and they need to know it's all right to talk and it's he's just finding that safe space to talk where they can just be okay and just get some good support without it being too heavy for it or just you know for any other reason just they're going to get passed on to the next place that's not going to help them you know okay. we, we, can't, we can't cue anything all we can do is talk about it and that's massive I think just that release of talking about your problems is massive no that's it it's knowing you're not sorry there you go knowing you're not alone and there's other people like you've said out there who you know who have thought about it I seen it happen in prison a lot slashed his, just slashing himself up claret going on everywhere I was just and that was my first time in prison so that were, that were an eye opener you know it, you know I don't, I don't know what you mean, but I had to cut my, I, had to, I was sharing a pad in Berlin with my bra, and I had to cut my bra down um, one time, eh? and that killed me, you know what I mean? I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, um, it's, it you know what I mean, that's how, you know what I mean? Um, it, we were dubbed up the girl in Berlin, and he was going through a bad time, um, and as I say, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, I just had the chair. You know how you get the plastic chairs? Yeah. And well, mine was next to my bed. We used it for the ask me kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just like you asked me, I'm sorry. And I just heard the A. Eh? And uh, it was the time, it was 12 o'clock in the morning. I just heard the, the screech of the, the hang we going away, the chair. And I just bounced in and I just seen the legs going like that. And the next, and the next man, I just jumped up, started banging, banging the door, pressed the bell, and went round here. And I grabbed them and I'm trying to lift them by the feet because they say lift them by the feet and try and loosen the, the chimney. I couldn't, you know what I mean? I couldn't, and I'm banging, I'm greeting, I'm screaming. You know what I mean? This been only about 2007. Um, and the screws at the door. And he's calm down, calm down, calm down in that, eh? And that's probably about the first time I've ever spoken to it. Spoke about it. Um, and that was my brother, you know what I mean? But we managed to, we managed to get him done. Um, and oh, his tongue and everything was it, you know what I mean? And it was a horrible sight, eh? But we managed to get him out. And he went away to the hospital. And it's just never left my, it's just never left the brain, you know what I mean? Because I'm usually a deep sleep. Sleep, sleep up here and I usually put earplugs in my ears you know what I mean but that night I never you know what I'm talking about and it was just when I woke up and the same about and I just I just seen the legs you know what I mean and, and the shadow and I was like fuck off and I just bounced out of the bed you know what I mean and the next man I was like fuck you dead man I'm fucking it was like I man it was it was, it was heavy like okay. um, but oh. he's he, he's suffering a new a lot of mental health, eh? um, and it's just like you know what I mean. He he's kind of like he's kind of like, like a twin brother to me, if you know what I mean. Um, no matter you between us, and when we were younger, we used to be everything with the girl. We used to steal cars. We used to everything. You know, I'm not going to mention too much, but got a way to the body. Um, but I I'll explain more in the pod, but. That I found my brother and uh, they they sell and I know two people in Berlin. Um, I've actually seen them hanging and it's not a very very nice sight. Eh? And and ne- no, never. Just trying to think. I don't think I've ever come across it personally that close. You know, other than me doing it myself, I don't think I've ever. Seen anyone? I've seen some stuff like, but um, I don't think I've seen out quite like that. And yeah, I can understand why that would stick in your head, especially being your brother. No, uh, bad like, uh, yeah, totally. And as I see, uh, I, I didn't know what made me. I don't, I don't even know what made me come out with that. There's people once, yeah. Um, sorry about that, folks. No, it's all right, mate. You know, sometimes you need to talk as well, you know. 
Don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. Nobody's going to think any less of you, mate. You're only being honest. Yeah, like, you must be an you know. You've been through a lot in your life, hey, and you try and get your story out. And, be, you know what I mean? And it's trying to get out of it, but you just don't know how to. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And it's eating you up. It's eating you up every day of the week, my months. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm, I'm working with people, but as I say, it's just. I can just feel myself going back to that way I was, you know what I mean? And I just didn't want to go that that way because if I did that way, then I lost everything and I walked a lot for August 2010 to the new with two car washes, I've all sorts, and I've got a nice family and I just didn't want to lose it, you know what I mean? But the buttons getting pushed, you know what I mean? And there's memories coming up. No, it's like family, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you can just feel it, you know what I mean? And you know, though, we, once you know, you, you're getting that, you know, you can step back and just say, no, yeah. no, I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do this to me. I've got this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that, it's been able to control that and not going out and getting in car and going and kicking somebody's head in or kicking somebody's door down or going and smacking next door neighbour because they've pissed you off or you're in a, in a bad mood or going down to the pub and getting annihilated and coming and beating your ass up. As long as you don't do that, then you're winning, aren't you? And that's where we're at. Just We're just at that stage where we you know, we, we can control it and that's what it's about for me. No, it's going to be rough because um, as I say, um, there's a lot, my dad's dying of uh, mutant neuron disease, you know what I mean? And there's questions I want to ask him, you know what I'm talking about? Why are you putting me in care? You know what I mean? Why just me, you know my brothers? You know what I'm talking about? There's, and there's questions I want to my mum too, you know what I mean? But she's dying of COPD. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to be fucking putting a burden on them and saying to them, listen, you know what I mean? And making, making their illness any what you know what I'm talking about? Um, That's an hard one for me because I'm opposite because my mum died of cancer when I was 15, 16, might have been with my GCSEs. The, I'm saying, but I can't ask her. So you just remember, you know, we've all got, we've all got our shelf life. Do you know what I mean? Once that shelf life's gone, it's too late to ask. So if you're going to ask, you're probably better off doing it sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Well, it's my dad can all talk. That's, my dad. that's only my pers- that's only my personal opinion. No, no, every, a, lot every, of, every. a lot of people have said that, Peter. Eh? Um, no, no, you need to get it. You need to ask Arnie. But my dad can only talk through pressing the computer screen. You know what I'm talking about? And I just didn't want to. You know what I mean? But I, I need because I need these answers. You know what I mean? To get out of my head. Same my mum. Why she? Didn't, you know what I mean? Why she didn't come to that panel that day and choose to go on that bus to go to work and leave me to want my social worker and want my dad put me in care? You know what I mean? When she was invited, you know what I'm talking about? Why? Yeah. It's just a lot, you know what I mean? Um, and as I say, my wee pal, Gary Donnelly, um, he was only 13. we ran away from jail um, We were younger, Canberra. And as I say, he, he was a wee heroin user. Way back in 1998, was I think? 1997. Um, I was only 13, 14. Mm-hmm. No, I'm 15. And as I say, um, we Jerry, I didn't know what Herman was at the time I went on RA, and I'd run away with him through Embra, and he was always away, breaking into place, and doing what he was doing, and I didn't know anything like that. Cause I'm from Falk and it was just mainly cannabis and drink kind of thing, eh? And then uh, we got caught, sorry, by the police and we got broke to back to jail and secure unit, right? And the next day in the morning, the staff came up to my, my room door and was like to me, go and get your wee pal. And I was like, right, hey, in the bar, because we had to go and see the headmaster, eh? Uh, probably the principal, mm-hmm. sorry. And so I ran up, Jerry, Jerry, you know what I mean? And I opened the door. Like your bedroom, eh? 
And I'm like, Jerry, and straight away I've seen two members of the staff. I can't mention their name. Hey, and then I see the uh, and then they're laughing. And I'm like, uh, here's Jerry. And they're like, hey, there. I've done it. And they, he was thinking, he was fucking hanging by the window. He's on yourself during the night. You know what I mean? And the staff had sent me up. to fucking bastard on that place. Get him. Tell me to come down for your breakfast when they do. And know what they're trying to say to me. That's what, that's what happened. You're on the way. What are they saying? You know what I mean? What are they fucking saying? You know what uh, what was the day? You know what I mean? I just didn't understand. You know what I mean? Because I heard them screaming during the night. I need to go. I need, I need to go. I need to go. You know what I mean? You didn't understand. I didn't understand. And the staff had brought them in. And the police were up. And they were keeping a guard at your room. Know that, eh? But in the morning, about half past seven, eight o'clock, you woke up for your breakfast. And as I say, there was the staff was like, go and get your, go and get your wee pal. Here. So I went and got him and opened the door. There they were. Boom, and there'd be a guy. He was only about, about 13, need to eat a shop, need to eat my leg, you know what I'm talking about? And the other two members of staff last week's hand laughing. That's what I'm to you if you run away. See, that sticks in my head, eh? you know what I mean? And yeah. it's just, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's fucking metal, man. Eh? It's like, what's the normal as world, eh? you know what I mean? How can people do that to you? You know what I mean? I've got, a, I've got an up and coming trial with them, eh, for the residential care thing. Eh, my, because, as I say, it's post, post-traumatic stress disorder. You know what I mean? For like, the, the trauma I've been through when I was a young boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the beatings and what stuff gone through fucking like, um, schools and stuff. You know what I mean? So, I've got a lot to kind of go through that way, but it work there. You know what I mean? It work there. Um, and exercise, do the gym. That's good for depression and and. You know, you know that yourself, you know what I mean? Um, but I, yeah. there's a lot to come out, you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, that's probably, uh, probably, that's probably the, the most I spoke about it once, yeah. But, as I say, we need to speak more about these things, eh? And open up a lot more. Um, because if we didn't, yeah. then we're just going to suffer in silence, as you say, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally agree. People go open up, talk about it. But I think, I don't think it's just that. There's got to be something there listening up as well. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 the main thing. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah. if, if nobody can listen to you, or if nobody can even just come on like this. No, I, no, I didn't even know you, Peter. I've, I've only met, I've only spoke to you once on live chat, but I spoke to you on the phone. You know what I mean? I'll probably tell you me. And I've told anybody, you know what I mean, in a long time, you know what I mean. So it just shows you that sometimes talking to somebody else is a good thing, you know what I mean, because you can know them, because yeah. you know the person's going to sit and listen to you, because they've been through the same, you know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. It's, yeah, so, it's, all, it's all right, they're going to speak to a fucking psychiatrist or a psychologist, but they've never lived the experience that you lived, you know what I mean. It's only, it's only another person. It's lived your life, what understand your life. You know what I'm talking about? Because it's all yeah. right for it's what like, it's what like a screw saying to a prisoner, ah but uh eh, you be brand new, but how do you know I'm gonna be brand new? You know what I mean? You didn't you didn't stay here. You know what I'm talking about? You go home at night. You know what I'm talking about? Um but yeah. I the suicide and stuff like that is it needs to be opened up here. You know what I mean? And recognise me. Same with depression, same with loneliness, and as I say, just people listening, you know what I mean? Because the way the, the world is now, it's fucked. You know what I mean? Basically, there's nobody wanting to listen to you. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. but, I think um, anybody, I think the other thing, I think the other thing is as well, anybody with a background like mine or yours, yeah. um, they just don't want to entertain us either. They don't want to put the money or the time or the effort into it. So it means that people like me and you need to get out there and need to get aware that there are people out there trying to help. Yeah. You know, people who have addiction, uh, mm-hmm. drug and alcohol, tablets, whatever it may be, gambling, yeah. <laughs> methadone. Heroin. Yep. Um, 
but they've got to talk about the underlying problems and try and get them. That's what yeah. they need to deal with, the underlying problems. Um, yeah. Because, again, it's self-help, isn't it? And if you don't want to stop smoking, if you don't want to stop drinking, if you don't want to stop gambling, it doesn't matter what anybody else does, it's, it is very much self-help. So you've got to get to the underli- underlying problems to deal and then start dealing with the others. Yeah. 100%, 100%. Right, Peter, um, unfortunately, my battery's ready to run out. I've got about 10% left in my battery. Um, so, what you want to leave it? You want to, you want to say before we go off? Um, don't stay silent. Don't stay silent, guys. Uh, you know, come forward, talk about it. Go to a group. Um, there's plenty of them out there. Come online, yeah. speak to me or Darren. Yeah. Um, you know, just, yeah, you've got to get it out there, let it out. Um, you will feel better once you've released it. You will, Darren. You might feel a bit shit, but then tomorrow you might feel a bit better. So, um, yeah. just let you feel better tonight. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, just, Keep talking about it, keep making people aware, keep sharing it, keep subscribing. Um, well, and hopefully, 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 I'll come back and join Darren next week, Friday or Saturday, and we'll do another live on something else. Yep, definitely. Um, as I say, I'll speak, to, I'll speak to you during the week about that, and we'll bring some milk up. Um, another subject um, about mental health awareness. And as I say, Peter, it's a pleasure speaking to you as always. And keep the, the drugs up, and the gloves up, sorry, and the drugs down, and speak up Scabra and Falkirk. And please tune in to us next Friday um, with Peter from Scabra and Dan from Carson TV. And I'll say, Peter, pleasure talking to you, and I'll talk to you next week again at the same time. Okay? Thank you, you right? guys. Listen, guys, anybody who's watching from my site, uh, I'll jump on Speak Up Scarborough and draw the scratch cards now shortly because Emma's just about to go to work so I'm just going to say bye to her and then I'll be on to do the scratch cards alright thank you for watching and I'll see you guys all next week cheers Darren no bother, Peter. have a lovely evening tell your wife I'll speak, I'll speak to her soon to you let me you mate have a good one stay care stay, take care no bye no bye